What are we saying? We're saying that I had reason with a couple of the brethren, like uh, Brother Wyndham, um, Wyndham uh, Manley, and Shalom, and Shalom to other brothers and sisters that we reason with and those who we haven't reasoned with. This particular vid is for the blessing, the authorization, what's called the Barakot Ha Nehanim, the blessing or the authorization of the bread and the wine. You know, saying the bread and the wine. And we're speaking in the Melchizedek sense or Melchizedek sense of our black Lord and Savior, Yehoshua HaMoshia. So what is the blessing, the the burkot or the barakat pomerania. What's the blessing of the bread and the wine? Now, we want to show you some of the basics that you um, should have in order to be able to celebrate um, Geta's, Geta, Geta Rat, or the Lord's Supper, our Black Lord's Supper. One of them is the the matya, you understand, or the the motya, you understand, the matza, what's known as the matza. Here's a here's a pretty um, kosher, you understand, no pun intended. There's a very kosher brand right here. This is Yehuda matzos. Now the matzos, the Ashkenazis say matzot, but it's really matya. If you look at the the Hebrew in the Torah concerning the um, unleavened. Unleavened means that it doesn't have any uh, any yeast in it. Now we know that the yeast is is also there is the metaphysical. You understand? But the foundation, the, the physical matzah. You understand? Or motziyah. You understand? So have the motziyah, the motziyah right here, right? Um, this is the, this is the the we can say the bread. And we're going to touch on the lamb's bread as well. But let's get the basic foundation. Now, we touched on before the um, kedem or the kedem, you understand, the kedem, you understand, which is the, the kosher or the kasha, the kash root. And the laws concerning the kash root are also contained in the scriptures, particularly in um, Vayikra or in Orit Ze Lewawian. And this is the this is the wine right Manischewitz is the one that I and I recommend you know recommend the Manischewitz and you know they're not giving a, a, a tithe as of yet but they're doing a good a good product you understand we speak about the faithful you understand the faithful um uh converts to Judaism the faithful Jews I'm not talking about the so-called Rothschilds or the so-called um, Zionists, but many of them actually oppose the so-called Rothschild or the Zionists, and that's a whole other matter. But we wanted to point out right here the wine, right? The wine. Now remember, Christ says that he wouldn't drink of this until he drinks of it anew in the kingdom of his Father. But he said for us, you know, as 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 much as we would, we do this in remembrance. So this time coming up, 2012, beginning the evening of the 6th, or so-called in the West Friday evening, but from a Hebrew or Jazz calendar and calculation of time, Friday evening is really the Sabbath Eve. So these are some of the, the elementals or the sacraments. You understand? This is the wine right here, and this perhaps for children or those who might have a you know, a drinking problem. Some have been challenged by the alcohol, you know, and therefore they're trying to avoid, you know, in spirit and in truth. So this is uh, non-so-called um, fermented. You understand? It's the Kedem. You see the Kedem? That's like Kedem, Kedem in the Hebrew, the Kadmon Adam, Kabbalistically speaking. Kedem, as in Kedemawi, Haile Selassie. The same word sound from the Afro-Shemitic. We've touched on that, we'll touch on that some more. So the bread, the bread and the wine, and of course, also the Kanabosim. How Christ said that he would not partake of this until he partakes of it anew in the kingdom of his father. You understand? And this is, this is the lamb's bread. 
you also in the Kana Balsam. This is the bud of the Kana Balsam, right? Now, in Christos, in Christ, partaking of the Kana Balsam has a totally different um, effect than just so called smoking weed. You understand? Smoking weeds. No, we're talking about the good fruit. You understand? Not the weeds. There's a difference between the weeds and the wheat. You understand? And the good fruit and the true fruit. Now, um, that's the first first thing. So we want to show and demonstrate that. So here, this is the this is the the blessing. Wow! Look at that color. I don't know if you can see that. This is very this is a very kind of light a light type of blue right there. Perhaps we will use we will use the black. You understand the blessing? You understand of the bread and the wine, right? The blessing of the ble bread and the wine. Blessing. Let's go over this, right? And now in the Hebrew, that's known as the bird coat. Ha, ne, he, ni, right? Ha, ne, he, ni. Now, bird coat, bamarinya, you understand? We know this as the ba, re, ke, te, or the, the, ba, re, ke, right? The blessing, you understand? The blessing, yes. okay. Yeah, the blessing, the barakat. So what we want to discuss is the blessing. What's the blessing of the bread and the wine in connection with Fasika, in the connection with uh, Yegir Tarat, our Black Lord and Savior's evening meal. So first thing, let's get some scripture. Let's get some scripture. We're looking at two references here. Here's a old reference from an old uh, dictionary or concordance, I think in an old Bible or something, and we took it out, stapled it together right here. And the reason why um, something like this I think is really um, useful, because um, let's get, give you a close-up, if you see it's a concise harmony, you understand? So some of the key significant events in the four Gospels are harmonized, you understand, to where they appear in the different you know, how the different Gospels, the four Gospels, remember the four square, the foundation of the true church is four square, even as the cross. You understand? And the circle is 360 degrees, and the square is 360 degrees. So we, we once again have that idea of the cross, of the square, of the four-foldedness, even with the four beasts. When we see the four beasts in uh, Ezekiel, you understand? We see the four beasts in, in, in Revelation. And then there are five, right? There are five sacrificial um, um, creatures which are acceptable for sacrifices we've been studying in this Torah portion. But the last two, the turtle dove and the, and the pigeon, come into one category because they're both the poor man's um, sacrifice, in other words, the poor man's sacrifice, and they are classified as the fowls or the winged creatures. So when we now condense that, we come down once again to the four, you know, the four once again. So we have the four Gospels. And um, in um, our Gospel of H.I.M., of the Imperial Majesty, Hala Selassie the First, we have a, a clip, or actually the full interview, where His Majesty is um, explaining the, the usefulness especially for us as, as newborns and as youths um, of the Bible and in particular of the study of the Bible. And if we could just get that portion right here and we'll just give you a quick, uh, a quick reference to the, the, four, the, four, the four Gospels and what His Majesty advises concerning the, the, the Gospels as a foundation. Um, let's see if we can find this right here. Uh, he's asked by he's in an interview with Dr. Dr. Hoffman, uh, Dr. Hoffman, and um, we didn't highlight it in this. He speaks on. Oh, right here. Here, here we go. Uh, Dr. Hoffman, page 152, says he asks uh, or he says first, it is a magnificent answer, and I am deeply grateful for it. 
to turn to another subject, Your Imperial Majesty. Are there any passages of the Bible that have become especially meaningful to you? And His Imperial Majesty answers with the following. I have the highest respect for the Bible as a whole. We also recognize the rightful name the Bible bears the Metzhaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals. We find that in all the periods of the Old Testament, in the time of the patriarchs, kings and prophets, great miracles were done. On the other hand, the time in which our Lord himself gave the command, the Tzav, the Tzava, Tzawa, is Izacho, the command to go to all the world and to preach is also of high value. Then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels in which the sayings of our Lord, of Adonenu, are recorded, are pillars. They are pillars for all men on the earth. Therefore, the Bible should not be cut into portions. And so he speaks about the four Gospels and reminds us that the four Gospels are, 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 are pillars you understand? For, for all humanity, for all humanity. So in looking at the four Gospels in connection with the, the Passover, the Fasica, and, and our Lord's Supper, Yemich uh, Adashau, Ma'id, in the last, what they call the Last Supper, or Yegitarat, the Lord's Evening Meal. Um, let's get the scriptures now. This, first of all, this whole section is, is very beautiful because if you look at Sunday, the, the April 1st, this year, 2012, that was Palm Sunday. We addressed, um, was it uh, John chapter 12? If you read over John chapter 12, it has the Palm Sunday, uh, the Lord's uh, entry into Jerusalem, and it dovetails with this particular season that we're in. Now, in moving forward to the, to the preparation for the Passover, take a note of this, brothers and sisters, disciples, Matthew chapter 26, verses 1 to 5. This is under the, the, the section preparation for the Passover. Matthew chapter 26, verse 1 to 5. Mark chapter 14 verses 1 to 16, and Luke chapter 22, verses 1 to 13, verses 1 to 13. Now that is very, you see, that's very, very important, and let us, uh, let us, um, you know, address this, but let's first get the, get the scriptures out. We have a limited time in this particular vid, so let's just try to lay a foundation for this. And then as we discuss the elements, hopefully we have time to discuss the, 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 the words, the Hebrew and the Amharic um, blessing, barakat, that accompanies um, and, and show in the Passover Seder of our black Lord and Savior, the black Messiah, Yeshua, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, where it occurs and how important it is, how important it is. We have Luke chapter 24 on hold right here because it says in verse 30 chapter 24 verse 30 and it came to pass as he sat at meat or at meal with them now this is after this is after um the last what's called the last supper this is after adoni's seder that it came to pass as he sat at meal with them he took bread he took bread and blessed it. First he blessed it. The first thing he did was give the, the barakat or the barakot ha-nehenim. Now what is the barakot ha-nehenim? They are not blessings so much of thanksgiving in that sense. They are more blessings of authorization. You understand? These are the blessings before, before eating. These are the blessings before eating. And there's a particular word sound that has been lost in um, um, Christianity, you understand, especially in Gentile Christianity. There's a particular word sound that has been lost. But let's see how important it is, the Hebrew, the Hebrew blessing and the Amharic blessing, the pure language. And he blessed it and break. He break the bread. He break the, 
he breaks the matzah. You know what I'm saying? He breaks the bread, right? And after he break it, he gave to them. Right? And then in verse 31, now remember, they didn't know this was Yeshua. This is, this is the resurrected. Yet to Nassau and Yesus. This is the resurrected Adon. This is the resurrected um, black Messiah. You know what I'm saying? He's resurrected now, but they didn't recognize, they didn't know that it was him. But then, when it came to pass, as he sat at meat or at meal with them, he took bread and he blessed it and break and gave to them, verse 31, and their eyes were opened. You see, that, they didn't recognize him. You see, and this is, this is a sign of what they call the second coming of Christ, or really, more correctly, the revelation, the revelation of Christ. You know what I'm Because Christ was the true Christian knowledge, with the, with the true sons and daughters, with his true disciples. He has been with them ever since, ever, ever since he gave the, the Great Commission. You understand? He said, I am with you even to the end. But now the counterfeits talk about his returning, and I can't wait to get back, so forth and so on. But with his word is that he is with us. So it's not that he is so-called coming back in that sense, but he is going to reveal. It's the revelation. So now we see their eyes now being opened after he blessed the bread, the matzah. You understand? After he blessed it after he break it, and after he gave it to them, and their eyes were open. And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. So now after this, they knew who he was. When they recognized who he was, he, he disappeared. You understand? He was, as we would say, he was ghost, so-called, right? He was a spook. But after all, he is the black Messiah, so it makes sense. And he vanished out of their sight. Verse 32 and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us, within I and I, while he talked with us, I and I, by the way, and while he, here, get this right here, here's the, here's the very important part, and while he did what? While he opened to us the scriptures, not just a verse here or there, as they do in the counterfeit Christian, no, he, he went through the Torah, he went through the Psalms of David, the, the Tehillim, you know what I'm saying? He went through the, the Nadim or the Naveen. He went through the prophets with them, and he opened up their understanding, their overstanding. You know what I'm saying? Their overstanding. And then it says in verse 33, 33, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem because they left after the crucifixion. You know what I'm saying? Because they were, they, they were heavy-hearted. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like after the, the creeping coup against Hala Selassie, the Rastafari were heavy-hearted. You know what I'm saying? Bob Marley tried to lift us up and say, Yahai, Yahai, Jalive. You know what I'm saying? Jalive, children, yes, Jalive. But still, that affected the movement mostly because our understanding of the scriptures has not been, was not open to us. If it was open to us, just as with the crucifixion of the Son, we'll recognize that what they did to the Son they have done to our father, to Abba Kedus, to Kedus Abba Tachin. But now, after their, after their eyes was opened up, you understand, and, they, and their understanding of the scripture was open to them, they rose up. You understand? So they're in that spirit of, of uprising. You understand? That spirit of uprising or resurrection. This is what this whole reason for the season is about. Not no Easter bunny or Easter eggs or any of that, that those false gods or idolatry, but this is the truth. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven. Not the twelve, but they found the eleven. Now think about all you probably have heard about that number eleven. But it's always with the evildoers and this and that and so forth and so on. But now, overstand the God aspect of the leaven. They found the eleven gathered together. And them that were with them, saying, the Lord has risen, Adoni has risen, the black Messiah has risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simeon, to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known, get this, Verse 35, and how he was known to them. You know, when Paul speaks about um, examining yourself and, 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 like, recognizing the body, you understand, the body of Christ, hopefully we'll touch on that verse right after this, how he was known to them 
in the what? In the breaking of bread. And then he's going to appear in this very same chapter, Luke chapter 24. So now this is all to explain, first of all, the importance of the blessing. You understand? Because it says that they now went to Jerusalem and told their brethren, check it out, Adoni is risen, the black Messiah, the black Christ is risen, is real, and he is risen. You understand? And we got to know this, you understand, in the what? In the breaking of bread. What's another name for breaking of bread? It's the communion. You understand? It's the communion. In that communion, he was known. You understand? He was Gnostic. He was known to them. And as they thus spake, Yeshua, Joshua himself stood in the midst of them and saith to them, once again, Salam le nan to Yehun, that peace be to you all. But they were affrighted. They were terrified and affrighted. Check it out. They were, see, now they are an example for us, especially as we are growing up. You understand? As we are growing up. But they, at this time, were terrified and affrighted. And check it out. They supposed that they had seen a what? They supposed that they had seen who? They had seen a spirit. They supposed that they had seen a, 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 a phantom. You understand? Or fantasia. You know, they thought they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why, why are you troubled? Well, you know, why are you fretting? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? You know, frets and worries and phobias. They were, they were going through phobias. They were going to PTSD, in a sense. Because this is what, what they were going through, that stress after the crucifixion of Yeshua. You understand? And, and the enmity of the religionists, the so-called Jews, right? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. You understand? Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. This is interesting because, remember, he just appeared. He appeared out of nowhere amongst them, just like he did in, 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 in the house with them when, when, on, on the road. You understand? He appeared to them. So he was there already, but now he made himself, he was in the spirit, but he made himself known. You understand? He revealed that it was a revelation. So imagine in this world, all that which we don't see, you know, the reality of the King of Kings of Christ that we don't see and we don't recognize because our eyes are not open. You understand? And it all is dealing with that communion, the breaking of bread. You understand? The breaking of bread, or we can say the body. It's all about the body of Christ, the Akala Christos. And when he had thus spoken, he shewed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed or mamend not, in other words, it says, and while they did not accept this as true for joy, it says, while they yet believed not, while they didn't have Amen for joy, and wondered, he said to them, you know, while they still were thinking, like, how is this? You know, how is this possible? Like his majesty just appears, Abba Caduce appears amongst us. And we're like, well, what? This is, this is, this is crazy. Like while they, while they were wondering, check out what Joshua asked, the resurrected Yeshua. He said, have you here any meat? You know, have you something to eat? You have any ayatah? You have any yud? You have any food? You understand? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of an honeycomb. Now, this was not the... Passover Seder. But I want I want to make that very clear. This is not the bread and the wine. We're just going on this right here to kind of show how important the the breaking of bread and the blessing, the blessing that that one two three. He blessed it. He break and gave them one two three. He blessed it. He break it and he gave it to them. Right. And then it says that he took it. And he did eat before them. So he, he, he took the, the food that they had, and he ate it before them. And he said to them, this is what he said to them. Check out what he says to them. He says, these are the words which I spake to you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. Everything must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the Psalms and in the prophets concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You understand that they might understand the scriptures. And then, once again, in Luke's second book, Acts of the Apostles, we have him going into even more detail and spending, I think, even an additional 40 days amongst them. You understand? Um, 
teaching them, you know, the scriptures, you know what I'm saying, so they can be able to recognize in the times to come what is the real meaning for all these so-called signs and wonders and things that we are witnessing. So the scriptures and our understanding must be, must be open, must be open. And it goes on, just to conclude this right here, the commission to um, preach the good news. And he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin Remission of all that bad karma, all that negative karma should be, and, and bad DNA as well too, should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? Beginning at home, in other words, and spreading abroad. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, look and see, I send the promise of my father. He's now promising us of his father, our father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. In other words, stay here until you really have that spiritual power. You understand? Almost like charge up here first before you, you know, before you go out. And it says, and he led them out as far as Bethany. Now, if you remember in Luke chapter, chapter 12, which connects with, um, uh, Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem, right, upon that donkey, which is also another symbol, he was at Beit Ani, Beit Ani, you know what I'm saying, and the Beit Ani, you know, that, even the etymology of that name, and we'll get into the mystery, you know, the so-called the Egypts, before the sun was called out, it explains the significance of Beit Ani, or they say the house of suffering, it's called, it's usually translated the house of suffering, and he lifted up his hands, and bless them. So when he bless them, he didn't say, oh, I bless you. He didn't say, bless you. No, no, it, it's, it's much deeper. It's much more relevant with the true spiritual reality. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, while he was gi giving them the barakat, he said, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. You know what I'm saying? So is the true Yeshua, Yeshua, an E.T., not just an Ethiopian, but an extraterrestrial? Is there something more to this whole thing about space and so-called aliens? Well, must be. You know what I'm saying? And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Now, with the limited time that we have in this particular um, recording, let us just go through the blessing. Um, let's just go through this blessing right here. Let's go to Luke for a moment. Uh, we, we touched on the preparation for the Passover. Then Christ, the Messiah, he institutes the sacrament. The sacrament. Now here's where the sacrament, you understand? The sacrament of the Lord's Supper is instituted. It's still in chapter 26 in Matthew, you understand? Still in chapter 14 for Mark, right? Um, and we're still in chapter 22, chapter 22 for Luke. Now, John doesn't record the preparation for the Passover. It's not part of that so-called synoptic gospels, nor does it record Christ instituting the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. But what, what John does, what Johannes does record, the other gospels don't record. And in the chapter 14, 15, 16, and 17, you understand, is a very good after Fasica, you know, after Fasica meditation. You understand, chapter 14 deals with the Moshiach, Christos, begins his um, consolatory discourse, consolation to them. You understand, remember, this is, we do this in remembrance. The bread and the wine is in remembrance. You understand, and right there in these scriptures that we've pointed out, chapter 26 for Matthew, compare that, get the harmony of that with Mark chapter 14, then compare those and get the harmony of that with Luke chapter 22. You understand, Luke chapter 22. Luke's actually um, would be one that would be favored if one wants to choose one particular one and also know the proper way to um, have that. Uh, Passover or, or Adoni's uh, Fasica Seder, you know what I'm saying? Luke's probably would be the, 
the 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 better one you understand um of of the other two but but all of them harmonize you understand all of them harmonize but Luke gives you a little bit more um information you understand Luke's uh Wengill gospel Luke was more of a, a a gnostic though not fully gnostic you understand while Matthew was still he was a publican you understand so he was he was still a part of the old traditions you understand but he was willing to go forward with Christ Mark some say Mark's gospel was, is the first is the first of them Mark's gospel was, was was the first of them and then came Matthew and then later on came Luke now John's Wengill is more what ones will call the metaphysical they say it begins off more like in the beginning was the word. He's gonna go through genealogy, background, you know, or, or men and people. He comes straight from a a kind of a kabbalistic. You understand? He's dealing with the issues of light, illumination. You understand? Spirit. You know, the word, the logos. You know, the the spiritual kabbalistic matrix of the Hebrews is what John's Wengel gives us in Christ. And here in chapters 14, 15, 16, 17, Christ speaks on in chapter 15, the true vine, the true wine. He's explained that, yes, this wine, you understand, uh, the vino or the wine, wine is a symbol. You understand? But he's now showing us that this is a symbol of something even, of something even um, greater than that. This is why when we study um, the, the gospel for Christ, um, Christ the Supper. You understand? When we, we study the Supper, but let's go here to 22. Um, 22. Um, right? When we go through this and we study this, it's very interesting what we have because when he says to them, you understand? When he says to them that he will not, you know, partake of this until he partakes of this anew, you understand? in the kingdom is very significant when he says when he partakes of this anew in the kingdom. And now we have to compare these three particular gospels because if we first go to Matthew, let's just first build on Matthew and we'll get the get the word sound to this build on Matthew, Matthew twenty six. Matthew twenty six, Mark fourteen, Luke two two. So Matthew twenty six, here's what the Moshia says concerning 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 um that in verse 29, verse 28 and 29, or 27, he took the cup, right? He took the cup, right, and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins, for the remission of, of that bad, we could say bad karma. You understand? But... I say to you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit, you know, because there's many kinds of fruit, of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now, we as Rastafari, we say that that newness is the cannabosum. You understand that that newness is the cannabis, is the cannabosum, also known as the witnesses of the crucifixion, or by the names of the witnesses of the crucifixion, Mary and John. Remember that that's who was there, Mary and John. Where he said, where he said to John, "Behold your mother, woman, behold your son." You understand, and he took her to his home. You understand, so we have Marie Juana in in a Western sense of of the Christological.